Hi, it's Peyton. Let's look at the numerous representations of a quadratic function. Our objective is to be able to look at a graph and either formulate a function for that graph or to describe the graph verbally so that we know all the important information to be able to model it. Let's first look at a graph and formulate the equation for the graph. We will use information shown in depth in Module 4, Lesson 1, using vertices, max and mins, axes of symmetry, x-intercepts, y-intercepts. If you need a refresher, please go review these concepts before moving forward. There are two methods to formulating e equations for graphs. One is using the x-intercepts, the other is using the vertex. Each has its advantages and its disadvantages. We'll discuss these later. First, we'll use the x-intercept method to formulate the equation. If you recall, when we factor a quadratic equation, we, could, we would find the x-intercepts and it would look of the form y equals a times the quantity x minus n times the quantity x minus m where n and m are the x-intercepts. We're going to work in reverse here and multiply the two binomials and eventually work to the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. At some point, we're going to have to solve for a, but that's easy. Here's our first example. Given this graph, we want to find an equation to model it. Let's look at where the x-intercepts occur. I claim they occur at x equals negative 6, and x equals negative 4. This is our n and m value. So let's input those into our equations right now. So I have y is equal to a times the quantity x minus negative 6 times the quantity x minus negative 4. Let's simplify a bit by distributing that negative and we'll have that y equals a times the quantity x plus 6 times the quantity x plus 4. Now we need to solve for a, and let's pick a point that lies on our graph. I'm going to use the vertex here because it's very easy to read off. And a big note here is you don't want to use the x-intercepts. The equation won't work out. You need to use a point other than those. And the coordinate point for the vertex is the point negative 5, negative 2. Negative 5 is x, negative 2 is y. We're going to plug this information in and solve for a. So we'll have the equation, negative 2 is equal to a times the quantity negative 5 plus 6 times the quantity negative 5 plus 4. And now let's simplify. Negative 5 plus 6 is 1, negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. So we'll have negative 2 is equal to a times 1 times negative 1. And we'll simplify just a little bit more. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So we'll have the equation, negative 2 is equal to negative a. And now let's solve for a by divided by negative 1, and we find that a is equal to 2. And now that we've found a, we'll plug this into our equation and get it down to the general form. So our equation now becomes y is equal to 2 times the quantity x plus 6 times the quantity x plus 4. And we need to simplify this to general form, so we will, we will FOIL the binomials. And we'll do the first outer inner last, so we'll have x times x is x squared plus outer, which will be x times 4, so it'll be plus 4x. Our inner, which will be 6 times x, which will be plus 6x. And then our last, which will be 6 times 4, which will be plus 24. So we have that. Now let's simplify the parentheses, the interior of the parentheses a little bit by adding the 4x to the 6x, so we'll get 10x. So our equation will now become y is equal to 2 times x squared plus 10x plus 24. And now we can distribute the 2 across the parentheses. In doing so, we will have the equation y is equal to 2x squared plus 20x plus 48. That wasn't hard, was it? We used the x-intercepts, plugged them to the equations, found a point that we already know, used it to solve for a, and then simplified. Let's work another example now. Here's the graph. First thing we need to do is determine where the x-intercepts are. And I claim they're at what x equals negative 1 and x equals 4. And we'll plug that into our equation, y equals a times the quantity x minus n times the quantity x minus m. And here's what we should have. y is equal to a times x minus negative 1 times the quantity x minus 4. We'll simplify just a little bit to make life easier. 
So we'll find that y is equal to a times x plus 1 times x minus 4. Okay. Now I need to pick a point to determine what a is. And this time I'm going to use the y-intercept because it's easy to find. And that occurs at the point 0, negative 4. So I'm going to plug this information into the equation and solve for a. And the equation will now become negative 4 is equal to a times 0 plus 1 times 0 minus 4. And now we just need to simplify a little bit. So we have negative 4 is equal to a times 1 times negative 4. Okay, simplify just a little bit more. 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. So we'll find that negative 4 is equal to negative 4a. Now just divide by negative 4 to get a by itself and we'll find that a is equal to 1. Now that we know a, let's work towards our goal. So let's substitute that in and we're going to have y is equal to that 1, imaginary 1 that's sitting out there, times x plus 1 times the quantity x minus 4. Next, let's multiply the binomials using the FOIL method, first, outer, inner, last. And so we'll have x squared minus 4x plus 1 minus 4. And we just need to simplify, and all we're going to do is add negative 4x to the plus 1, and we'll find that the equation for this line is y equals x squared minus 3x minus 4. And that's our answer. We're done. Now, we need to discuss the weakness of using the x-intercepts when we have graphs. And it's sad. It's so sad. Look at this graph here. It doesn't have any x-intercepts. Can we really use the x-intercept form when we have that problem? But we do have another way of doing it, and that's using the vertex method.